Hey you guys, it's David Jaffe, the game director at the Bartlett Jones Supernatural Detective Agency, and this is a game guide to our brand new game, Drawn to Death. Now, if you're not familiar with Drawn to Death, it's a third person competitive online shooter, and it takes place pretty much entirely inside the pages of a high school student's notebook. So all of his doodles and drawings are basically characters that you can control on these really cool battlegrounds that have no limit other than this kid's very creative, sometimes twisted imagination. So in this guide, we'll jump into some of the nuance and meatier, deeper mechanics that really make Drawn to Death stand out and that we're really proud of to bring to the multiplayer shooter genre. So let's talk about modes for Drawn to Death that will be available on launch day. Our first couple of modes are modes that you've probably seen in similar games. We've got Deathmatch Free For All and we've got Team Deathmatch. If you actually start with only one other player, so a two-player game, you'll be dropped into a deathmatch mode called Brawl, which is really more like a one-on-one -on -one fighting game, and the levels themselves have been condensed and focused for only two-player battles. So when you get into ranked play with Drawn to Death, you get into core deathmatch and core team deathmatch, and this is really where the rule sets begin to differentiate themselves from other shooters. We wanted defense and offense to matter in Drawn to Death, and with that, Every time you die in core deathmatch or team core deathmatch, you or your team will lose one or two points. Our final mode for launch day is called Organ Donor, and Organ Donor is basically a mode where players kill each other, and in doing so, the enemy that you've just defeated drops their heart onto the battlefield. Players can pick up the hearts and have to deposit them in one of two bases in the level. Now, the 2x base will obviously give you double the points. It takes longer to deposit a heart in a 2x base, and that 2x base is actually moving around the space of the level, and it's growing and shrinking in terms of its size. The other part of it is that the more hearts that you're carrying when you go into a deposit base affect the amount of time it takes to pull off that deposit. So it really builds this kind of risk reward and tactical thinking in terms of how many hearts you want to have with you at any time in the game in order to dominate in organ donor. So the characters in Drawn to Death are really one of the things that we're most proud of. Our characters are designed to be totally unique from one another and require players to really dive deep in terms of mastering each of the individual fighters in this game. Uh, a good example of that is Ninja. She's this half woman, ninja half shark and her abilities could not be more different from any of the other characters in Drawn to Death. For example, her core navigation move is the ability to grapple anywhere in the level that she puts her anchor grapple onto. She can also use this grapple attack to slam into enemies. She does a little bit less damage with the grapple if she grapples into a single enemy but then presses the fire button which allows her to do a wider range area of attack grapple attack. Now every character also has a pro character and a con character on the battlefield. In the case of Ninja, when she sees Bronco on the field, she can actually do this grapple attack into him. And when she grapples into Bronco specifically, she'll spawn sushi, which she can then eat and gain health. She can also jump and put up a water shield. And if she puts up the water shield on a double jump, she'll actually put up a shield and do a 180 backflip. Ninja also has an anchor that can pin enemies down. This makes them easier to hit. It also takes their special weapons away for probably 20 or 30 seconds, depending on the character that you hit with. Ninja can also fire sharks as missiles. Now the first two sharks that are blue fire straight and they do pretty decent damage. The last shark, which is a huge red shark, actually has a lob to it. It's a bit of a harder weapon to hit with, but it does substantially more damage than the blue sharks. Ninja also has a passive move called Blood in the Water. Now, whenever she drops below 50% health, she's automatically able to determine enemies on the battlefield who are also weak. So let's talk about weapons now. So a lot of the weapons in the game carry with them the same level of nuance and depth as the characters themselves. A good example is Dodgeball Dan. So Dodgeball Dan is the upper torso of a severed dodgeball player. And you're carrying this guy around on your back. So the basics of this attack uh, are you just kind of throw these fast dodgeball projectiles. Now if you actually bounce the dodgeballs close to your target, they'll home into the enemy, making them easier to hit. Players can also sprint while they're holding Dodgeball Dan, which causes him to drag the dodgeball along the ground and charge it up and it'll catch on fire. So if you launch a flaming dodgeball on the ground, he tosses an underhand attack at an enemy that does a little bit more damage. But you can also leap into the air with a flaming dodgeball and hold the fire button down to charge this attack up and hover in the air. 
So one of the cool things about Drawing to Death is because it's coming out of this teenage kid's imagination, we don't really have any limits in terms of the locations we can have the players fight. One of our newest and most favorite maps is called Gladiator Graveyard, which is incorrectly kind of this mashup between Greek and Roman architecture where you're fighting with your fellow players in this gladiator arena. And what's cool about this is there's a lot of interactivity and a lot of things to discover that sometimes affect gameplay and sometimes are just fun. The walls in the level move and rotate and change the configuration of the map. They rise and they fall, creating what is sometimes a very tight maze-like area and then opening it up to a very big open arena space. There's also secrets all through the level. Some of these are gameplay secrets where if you shoot pictures of the Emperor, a crusher will come down from the ceiling and take enemies out with one giant smash. I mean, some of these are just like sight gags. What we love is that, you know, all throughout Drawn to Death, certainly you'll see it in Gladiator Graveyard, is the idea of just trying to shoot things and interact with things and seeing what happens. So at a high level, those are the pillars that really build and support Drawn to Death. There's so much more to discover. There's so many cool characters and so much depth and nuance and variety in the game that we hope that you'll be as excited when you're playing it as we are when we play it. And we hope this guide has really helped you Get your head around the stuff that we feel makes Drawn to Death a really unique, really cool game. And thanks for your time. We appreciate it. PlayStation.